Hello and welcome. My name is Darren Baker, and today we're going to talk about how to improve your live stream audio. In my opinion, audio is really the most important aspect to meetings, conferences, and live stream events. You may disagree, but consider the go-to method you will likely use to defend your point. But all too often, audio quality is overlooked, taken for granted, and mediocre at best. We're going to review some basic ways you can improve the quality of your audio and create a better experience for you and those you're communicating with. Let's start with the audio term signal to noise ratio. This term typically refers to the difference in an audio signal level between the actual audio content and the noise induced in the audio signal by the equipment itself. The goal to is to create a, as big a difference as possible. Today, I'm going to apply this term to your physical office or live streaming environment as the difference in the level between your voice and other sounds in the room. The first step is to listen for background noise in your space. There may be noises that you've never noticed before or some that you've just gotten used to, uh, but these sounds could be very noticeable to your microphone. These can include fans, printers, and other computer noises or other equipment, air flowing from the air conditioning vent uh, in the ceiling, fluorescent lights, and other things can give off buzzes and hums. Note that these sounds may be intermittent, so listen over time. Many of these sounds you may not be able to hear through your laptop speakers, standard earbuds, or even smaller studio speakers. You should use good quality over-the-ear headphones or full-range speakers to ensure that you're not missing anything that your listeners will have to endure. Many of these sounds have very low frequencies that can be too subtle or inaudible on these previously mentioned headphones or speakers, so be sure to use headphones that seal in your ears or a closed over ear design that minimizes outside sound getting to your ears as the best option. Next, we'll deal with the acoustics of your room. If there are a lot of hard surfaces, wood or tile floors, glass or smooth walls or ceiling, you may need to add some soft surfaces or other items to help kill audio reflections. Things like curtains, rugs, wall decor, or even bookshelves, or even get some acoustical tiles for the walls. You may also need to address things like your squeaky chair. Other types of background noise that you may need to consider how to minimize are other family members' activities if you're streaming from your home, such as children playing or watching loud movies, listening to loud music, dogs barking, and those kind of things. And also maybe some personal habits like drumming your fingers on the desk, clicking a pen, other things that you might not realize you do. These things may sometimes seem beyond our control, but we should do our best to minimize distractions to the content you're sharing. The last type of background noise you hopefully considered when you chose your space is proximity to large equipment noise from things like your HVAC unit, whether it's just outside in the hallway or right outside the window, also the laundry room or maybe the garage. Ideally, you should choose a place uh, in your home to put your home studio that is far away from these as possible. Well, now that we've taught, done all we can do for our environment, let's talk microphones. And to extend my use of the signal to noise ratio to the physical space a bit further, you want to plan to get your mic as close to your mouth as possible so your voice is much louder than any other noises that you may have not been able to completely eliminate. Two important things to consider when choosing a mic uh, is to maximize this concept of signal to noise ratio are its pickup pattern and its placement. Pickup pattern is the shape of the area a microphone will pick up sound. Uh, there, there are two types, of, uh, many types of pickup patterns, but the best for live streaming is called cardioid due to its inverted heart shape. This shape means the mic is unidirectional or designed to pick up sound from one direction. Some cardio mics are more directional and focused than others, and these are typically referred to in two other categories of supercardioid and hypercardioid, with hypercardioid being the most directional. I'll, I'll touch on this a little bit later as we talk about placement. Now, ideally, you want your mic to be about three to five inches from your mouth. Note that cardioid mics also have what's called a proximity effect, which means that low or bass frequencies are emphasized the closer you get to it. This could cause issues with the undesirable popping of P's or B's, which can be addressed with a pop filter or windscreen. Pop filters and windscreens can be used interchangeably or even together for severe popping offenders. Note that the pop filters are acoustically transparent, meaning they do not alter the sound at all when windscreen, where windscreens do cut the high frequencies just a bit. Uh, however, this typically is not a concern. Some mics have built-in pop filters, but you can always add an external one if needed. If you're just getting started in live streaming, you may consider using your laptop microphone. And although some high-end laptops employ multiple microphone arrays that can produce a fairly decent audio, they fall short in the placement area as they are several feet away from your mouth and may pick up too much of the room noise. They also typically offer limited to no software control or adjustments. Uh, it's always better to use an external mic if you can. Now we're gonna discuss placement, moving from the less desirable towards the more desirable. The next type to mention is a cell phone headphones with an inline microphone. And although these can be of decent quality and are much closer to your mouth, 
they're still not the recommended option, even though they are quite commonly used by Klisun meetings and whatnot. Uh, they have some built-in processing, uh, which can help its use for a cell phone, but may not be the best for live stream. Uh, the next one we're gonna talk about is tabletop. Uh, so I have an example here of tabletop. This gets your mic very close to you uh, within that very close distance. Um, uh, it also, uh, you can get very good quality ones for maybe $100 or so, and then you can spend as much as you want. Uh, this one also shows uh, the use of a pop filter and a windscreen together. Um, if you don't like having this right in front of you, uh, it can be kind of ominous. Another option would go to a boom arm. Uh, this can mount to the side of the desk and can be moved in wherever you need it, either above or come in from below. Um, note that this, there's some noise sometimes with those, with the cheaper ones with springs on outside, so you might want to look at uh, uh, ones that have internal springs. Uh, and then if you have, you're in a scenario uh, where, like we have here, uh, you consider using a floor mounted stand. Uh, we have the mic coming in from the floor and a boom arm that comes in over, above. So again, we're now using a hypercordiard hyper microphone, which is very focused and it's right on my mouth, which helps eliminate or uh, increase that signal to noise ratio compared to the, uh, the room noise around it. Uh, one thing I did want to mention as well is uh, this microphone here uh, and also a boom mic, you typically want to have that in a spider, uh, what's called a spider mount or suspension mount to it also, it's isolated from any bumps from the desk. Um, uh, also wanted to mention that uh, we, with our hypercardic mic here, we do use some electronic uh, adjustments to help eliminate some of the room noise. We have some with some HVAC noise in this room. Uh, we can touch on how we do that in a future episode. The next uh, microphone I want to touch on is called a clip-on, or it can be called a lapel or a lavalier. Uh, these clip to your shirt or a blouse or even a jacket. Um, they're fairly close uh, to your microphone, uh, to your mouth, so they do uh, pick up very well, but they do have some other issues. Uh, they're pointing straight up, so they can sometimes pick up noises from the, the ceiling uh, or things like that, or even your breath if you're a heavy nose breather. Uh, the sound can be also a bit unnatural. Uh, may need some EQ to make it sound their best um, as it picks up from your chest as well as from your mouth. Um, they can also be bumped fairly easily. Um, but all that said, they can be a very good choice and can also be wireless. Uh, so the next type of microphone is a headset. And this is really the optimum in terms of placement as they are within an inch or two of your mouth. This is great for our signal to noise use case. Uh, you can get them as a mic only option uh, in various styles. Uh, they either go over one ear or two. Uh, also, many gamers choose or streaming streamers choose to use gaming headsets uh, that are a microphone and a headset all in one piece. Uh, there are also some compact versions of that of a headset with microphone and a headset to, uh, headphones together. But generally, these uh, compact ones are not of good quality as the other choices. Uh, now we're going to talk about microphones by connection type, and the first one we're going to talk about uses an eighth inch or 3.5 millimeter connector. Um, other than headphones. Uh, that come with are made for cell phones. These are generally not very common today uh, and they have historically not been as a good quality and not recommended. Uh, note that if you choose to use one of these types of, of connections, make sure that your computer's is input is designed to accept what's called a TRRS or tip ring ring sleeve connection. Uh, as shown here, there are three main types of eight inch connector, TS or tip sleeve, TRS or tip ring sleeve, and TRRS which is tip ring ring sleeve. TS would typically be used for a microphone only connection. TRS is typically for a stereo audio signal and the TRRS is used for a connection with stereo audio and a microphone. Not all computers will accept a TRRS connection, although you would be able to plug it in. So check your specs. Next one we're gonna talk about are USB mics. Uh, now these have the simplicity of a plug and play and there's a wide range of quality and varied amount of control options. Uh, you can find many great uh, options for around $100, maybe less, uh, or you can spend uh, as much as you can afford there as well to find a really good quality one. Um, this one we have here also has, what well, comes with this table stand, also has uh, controls built on it for the pull, uh, pickup pattern, uh, volume, and it even has a headphone output with this volume control for that. Um, so that's a very good option. Uh, the other connection, or the next step up would be uh, XLR connections, which is this type of microphone. Uh, this one also point, I wanted to point out um, that uh, this is a side address mic, and there's some variations. Uh, some mics are meant to be in address. This one is from the side. So be aware of that if your microphone is that, and it's usually indicated by where the logo is uh, in terms of where you speak. Uh, also want to make a quick note that some cameras allow you to connect external microphones. 
Uh, this is typically a hypercardio mic like we have in our overhead mic here. Um, that because the camera's at a great distance, that hypercardioid again allows you to focus in on something at a distance and, and keep that sound ratio good. Um, this same connection can also be used with a cable to uh, connect with a tabletop or a boom mic as well, or even a wireless clip on or headset. Uh, there's a whole lot more you can do to your audio uh, if you're using an audio interface or digital mixer, which you would have to do if you use an XLR or a microphone. So we'll touch on that in a deeper dive in a future episode. Uh, you can find other resources and even connect with other event pros like yourself at backstage.showflow.tv. And lastly, if you're interested in trying uh, one of our soft Showflow software tools, then head on over to showflow.tv and sign up for a trial. Thanks for watching and see you next time.